Hi everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me in the end. Uh, welcome. Uh, I promise that I'm not going to make you suffer too much on this talk. I just want to present you the idea of analyzing CPUs. Um, So, just a little bit about Percona, probably already heard this all day, I'm not going to stick about it. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm not going to keep bragging about myself here as well. I'm a support engineer from Percona. And a few days ago, uh, it came an interesting case for support. Uh, common one, most of you that deals with software already got it. It's your CPU is burning. Something is completely taking over. And in case of a database, you, you can't do Q minus nine, of course. You want to keep your services running. So the idea of this talk is to present how uh, we support investigated this problem, uh, how we attacked and identified the issue using flame graphs. Also, in the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about code uh, graphs, which is another approach, and I'll explain details a little bit. So first, uh, this slide is a uh, uh, homage for Brandon, Brandon Gregg. Not sure if all of you heard about it, about him. He was the guru, the, the mentor of flame graphs. Uh, me, I'm just a, a Padawan here. I'm just summarizing the things. Uh, but his content, it's much more broad than what I'm going to show here. So uh, what are flame graphs? Uh, the best way to define flame graphs is using the words of the creator. So basically, flame graphs are a way to visualize uh, to visualize the profiled software. And in this way, we can quickly identify what are the threads uh, running, what code paths are running on the CPU. So saying that, uh, let's be a little bit more specific. And what is a code path? Most of you are aware of. Uh, this is a really simple code. Most of you saw it all universities are doing their work. Uh, main function, some functions that are called during the process. And this will lead us to call chains. So what are call chains? Call chains are possible ways that uh, the functions can work based on the behavior of the user or the, the behavior of the database. So in, in this example that I showed before, which is like possible uh, a library software, what do we are doing? Getting book lists, getting the book and the author, or the editorial, or getting a print, whatever. These are uh, possible call chains that can happen uh, off your tree. Of course, that we are talking when the software is running fine, not when he has a bug and it's crashes in the middle. Saying that, uh, we have the possible call chains. Uh, what do we do? So we profile it. So what, what is profiling? Profiling is a way of capturing metrics for a constant period of time. And then we can aggregate and combine and analyze it later. So. There are several ways of profiling. Most of you already use it uh, without knowing the name. Uh, raise your hand who never got the issue from the developer like, look, my credit is, is, is low. What do you do? You enable the slow log, then you set the long time, the query long, the long query time that you want. And then the queries are going to be profiled in the slow log. This is profiling as well. And later you use some tool that you want, PT, Query, Digest, Grep, whatever. 
you aggregate the queries, identify the ones that are using more rows, consuming more time, you use the metric that you want. So this is a profiling, a SQL profiling. In this case, I want to profile stack traces and code paths. And for it, uh, to analyze the burning phase, we are going to use perf. Perf is widely used on Linux. I think most of the installations comes by default with perf. If not, it's a really simple install, a yum, and you can install it. So with three, one, two, three simple commands, you can create the SVG file. And what perf record do? Minus A means that we are going to profile all the CPUs and minus G, we are going to capture call, call graphs or stack, free, or stack trace. Minus F99 means the frequency. So we are profiling this, the CPUs at 99 Hertz. And minus P, uh, this is the little trick, so you don't have to do PS and get the PID every time. If, if you're running a single instance, of course, uh, if you have multiple ones, then this is not going to work. And we are going to profile this for one minute. We are going to create data for one minute. After that, we are going to make this machine readable using perf script and sending it uh, to the output. And finally, using <coughs> the tool provided by, by uh, Brandon, we are going to create the flame graphs. Now, let me show you uh, the flame graphs itself. So, this is a flame graph. Basically, this is the data that we profiled using perf and after creating the, the uh, creating the SVG. So this is inter interactive, so you can zoom in and zoom out. I'm going to show you for the analysis. Uh, it's a little bit... So uh, how do we identify how do we work with with this bunch of colors and data so you have the y-axis and the x-axis and when we are analyzing on the vertical thing uh, you are going to see several stack trace uh, the, we, we have more above but I'm not going details let's suppose this is the last one so the, the last one is the one that is current on the CPU and the other ones are its ancestors. So the, be the best way to read is bottom up. So because I profiled my SQL D process, sorry guys, you're in the end, maybe may not see, but we can see that 100% of the CPU time was spent on my SQL D. Why? Because we were perfing only my SQL D. Now, when we look on the x-axis, uh, the order from left to right, it doesn't matter. Like, this has no logical order of time. It's only sorted uh, in al an alphabetical order. Uh, and why? To ma uh, maximize uh, the aggregation. That's it. There is no more meaning <coughs> from left to right. But when we are talking about the size, the width, of these boxes, this is what matters, and this is what we are going to analyze. So, as larger uh, becomes the, the box, more CPU was spent on this process. And here comes the good thing. This was based on a real case. So, if we start, my CQD is using 100%, but when we come to this outer table, we can see that 54% of the sample that we got was spent on the outer table, which is interesting. So when we go deep and we zoom in, we can see that now we have only the stack trace 
for it, we have the functions that MySQL is calling. And these bars start to be constant. And we see copying, that, copying data, insert, insert some secondary index, and now we see we are spending we are spending a lot of time checking foreign constraints. After that, we are seeing freeze on that, on that dictionary. And this requires a little bit of understanding the code. But this function means that we tried to acquire the lock here, but we couldn't. So the process is spinning. So it's waiting. And after investigating, uh, we collected some interesting Data, uh, data and we identified that because we are checking foreign constraints and the database of this customer had a small open t uh, table open cache we saw several tables being opened and closed so this involves it has a high cost for MySQL our proposal was increasing table open cache and with that we could reduce the size of this and it was smaller than the CPU not that stopped burning this is like a, a common name but we made the, uh, this whole process more friendly for the CPU and the database could go on more smoothly so this is the real importance uh, that we evaluate for flame graphs So, moving on, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about code graphs. Uh, so, wh what is code, code graphs? Basically, is what we call off-CPU analysis. So, if the previous uh, flame graph was analyzing <coughs> and identifying what was running on the CPU, code off-CPU analysis and code graphs identifies uh, what, the thread, what is making the thread wait to be executed. So we have the, the both sides. And in the end, I'm going to talk how do we merge them. So off-CPU analysis is where we are spending time waiting for things. As we can see on this graph, flame graphs are responsible for these two things. And with off-CPU analysis, we can identify why your query is waiting. If the query is waiting for uh, disk, if the query is waiting for, uh, the query, sorry, the thread is waiting for disk, network, or in case of MySQL, we know that there are several locks. Uh, if uh, the default uh, isolation level is repeatable read, so if you are inserting or updating, you have the famous and infamous gap lock, so this might make the thread wait, and this is all part of the off-CPU analysis. How do we do it? This is made with BCC tools, uh, so uh, for kernels that are newer than 4.1, you can just install it. Uh, it comes already with, with the operating system. I just pasted for the my opinion, the most two common ones, Red Hat, uh, CentOS version, just a Yum install, or Ubuntu Debian, the apt-get install, BCC tools, uh, and then it's going to install it for you. I'll wait to validate. Just check if this directory has the tools, and you are going to see, if you are more cu curious about, hundreds of scripts. Uh, you can do profiling with BCC tools for disk latency, network, uh, every sort of things. Uh, this would like take a life to learn. Uh, there are much better people than me about it. Uh, but the one that I want to focus now is the off-CPU time. So with off-CPU time, uh, the minus D option We'll put a delimiter. This is for the parsing of the stack trace. 
f is the, uh, to make the stack traces folded, minus p again is for identify the PID of the process. And we are going to collect for 30 seconds. Uh, the same idea, we are going to produce the stacks. And here we can use the tools from, from Brandon again to create the SVG files. So let me quickly show to you So this is the code graphs, and this is extracted, extracted from my SQL that I just uh, put it up, and uh, it, it was idle. There were no queries running on it. Uh, then I run a test with uh, the classic sysbench, of course, and this is what is happening when the system starts to get saturated. And as we can see here, we are spending a lot of time handling connections and this is waiting for a read or writes on the on the IO socket. But the curious thing and I did this on purpose, of course my MySQL I, I put very limited resources on a single core uh, virtual machine is that I was opening and closing connections for every single thing during my workload. Uh, one proposal here, after we analyze it, maybe using connection pool on the application or use thread pooling on my SQL side to reduce the amount of time spent, in, spent opening connections. And to resume, uh, of course, this, not only this, but the uh, flame graphs, they are absolute numbers. So it's interesting when you collect both and on this way, you have the 100% picture of what the threads are doing and waiting, and then you can correlate everything. Because just taking a look at this, you, don't, you can't infer if your MySQL is suffering or not. So it's good to have both uh, sides of the story, the running one and the blocked one. Uh, that's it. Uh, if by... That's it. If you have any questions, I am available. Uh, sorry for being short. I hope you got the idea. We are going to talk more about this on Percona Live. Or you can catch me on around here taking a beer. I will be really glad to answer all your questions. Uh, thank you. If you have time to take some questions now. Okay, so if someone has questions. Uh, I am available. Yes. Uh, I was I just want to talk to me. Uh, it looks very impressive. Uh, I was surprised that it was how readable uh, the calls were in the stack. Is that? I mean, it doesn't look like it did any special compile. No. Uh, can you repeat the question? Ah, oh, okay, this, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so his question uh, was uh, if I did anything special to MySQL to analyze the code paths. Uh, for the MySQL community version, there is a package uh, for RPMs, the, the, the debug package, which install the symbols. So like you just need to, if you do the, the bundle installation, it will come everything. So. You don't need to compile anything special to analyze it. Okay. Yeah, like not no magic, just another RPM I mean, of the bundle. Comes from the names of the, of the function calls and things. You can you can sort of understand what they mean, what's going on. And therefore, you can actually understand from from that. I guess that's the yeah. implication that uh, names are good, and therefore it, yeah. it helps to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Another thing that I usually do, I get on GitHub of MySQL, for example, I have on my, my repository, then I go to the source code and open the function when I don't know, and the, the function is really well documented on the header, it's really easy to... My question was actually going to go a little bit further, uh, but that's all true, that's what I was saying, but my question was more actually, I mean, I'm, most of my time I'm working with Oracle and Postgres, mm -hmm. uh, and I know Oracle is deliberately obscure, definitely, 
excited about Oracle, but that's how it works. But actually, a lot of the time I'm working with Postgres, and also I'm guessing MariaDB has the same name convention, is that right? Or? Uh, I'm not sure because Maria on recent versions are going to the left and MySQL is going to the right, like they are not, but in the past the functions were crossed, like most 99%. Nowadays they are really starting to differ. Okay, and you have no idea about Postgres, whether it's nicely labeled in that way. I know Oracle is deliberately obscured. I, okay, I can check for you, but for Postgres I, 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 I don't have. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, so for the office CPU uh, measurement, is there a way to see what actually what line it is in this function when it's with our CPU? Where it's stuck, where it was blocked and do not, uh, are not able to continue. I mean, do you want to get the name of the function? Uh, sorry? So, so you, at one point, a process is running and then it does something that makes it uh, uh, blocked. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and but what you show, I think, is only the function names. Function where this happened. Is, it, is there some way to actually see which line or area of the function that this occurred? Mm, no. Then you have to investigate the source code and, like, for a go to the specific line, you can use GDB. But then this, like, uh, GDB is attached to the process, and then you can literally dive into the codes and every single line of, but this brings a lot of overhead, so we don't use on production. But it's an option. Uh, if you don't have shell access to the, uh, to, to the, to the, uh, to the box, like to manage the service, is it possible to do anything from uh, the MySQL command line for flame graphs? Mm, no, no, because these are, uh, you need the, the libraries behind it. Well, I think that's it. Thank you, guys.